The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you join us for our webinar today on the power of buying local. My name is Josh Thompson. I'm with the Economic Development Division of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism, and Skills Training, and I'll be moderating and providing technical support for today's webinar. I'm joined today by the co-executive director of Local BC, Katra Katya Makura, pardon me, Township of Langley Councillor and Business Owner Angie Kwali, and Township of Langley Senior Manager Val Gafka. Together they'll be sharing their stories of buying local and the impact that it has had on their businesses and communities. But before I think, hand things over to Katya, I'm going to briefly run through some tips that will help you get the optimal experience with GoToWebinar. On the screen in front of you, you should see uh, your control panel there, and I'm just going to point out a few buttons that you'll be using today. So this one on top will hide and unhide your panel. This will make it full screen. This raise a hand button will let me know that you'd like to uh, pose a verbal question to our panelists today. So if you push that button, I'll be able to see that on my end, and I can unmute you if you'd like to provide a, uh, a question or a comment to our panelists. If you're not sure if your microphone on your computer works, your best bet is to use the phone dial-in option. Uh, for It's a Canadian toll number, but that will guarantee that your audio comes in uh, nice and clear. If you'd rather go uh, the easier route, feel free to just type in your question using this pane below and I can read it aloud to our presenters today. We'll have a number of opportunities for questions uh, during today's webinar, uh, but we should have ample time that they, uh, they all get answered, so feel free to type them in as you think of them. Uh, there'll be plenty of time and we'll get to them when we are able. So with that, I would like to introduce Katja. She's a strategic planning consultant with a background in digital strategy, branding, communications, and sustainability. Her focus is on helping companies operationalize their vision by bringing creative ideas, business thinking, technology, and sustainability strategy together to create unique business value. She has over 16 years experience as a strategist, information and business analyst, and facilitator for both global brands and independent businesses. Katja has a BCom from the University of British Columbia and a Master's of Science in Leadership for Sustainability from the Blekinge Institute of Technology in Sweden. Prior to joining LOCO, Ketcha had her own consulting practice for nine years. Earlier in her career, she was a lead strategist at Blast Radius, where she developed the strategic planning process model and led the application of it to global clients such as Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Europe, HSBC, Atlantic Records, and Nike. She was also on the management team of a Vancouver-based design consultancy, where she led client engagements and helped grow the business from five to over 20 employees within two years. With this business background, Katja has a keen understanding of what is important to business leaders at all scales of organization. She is a champion for business success and believes in business as a powerful force for positive social change. And with that, Katja, I'm going to turn the screen over to you. And uh, as soon as you see that kick off, you can start your presentation. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um... Going there. Can everyone Good. see the presentation? Okay. Yeah, it's there nice and clear. Okay, well, thank you for the introduction and for the opportunity to talk about um, buy local campaigns on the webinar. First, I just wanted to give a little bit of a background about Local BC to give our audience an idea of what we do and where we're coming from as an organization. So, Local BC is a not for profit society. Um, we're a local business alliance that's focused on growing the local economy in British Columbia. And our mission is really to shift purchasing dollars to and between local businesses in BC. Um, it, and really that's our, we focus on purchasing as a key lever for growing the local economy um, through procurement and helping to create thriving, resilient communities by creating those um, linkages through the local economy. So we do this in two ways as an organization. We're part business network and part research and advocacy organization. With the business network, we have over 200 members who are independent businesses. Many are located in the lower mainland, but there, we also have some from across the province, including Vancouver Island, Sea to Sky Corridor, Fraser Valley, and the Okanagan. And our goal with the network is really to provide ways that these businesses can release the value they have for each other, whether it's, it's a suppliers, partners, just, um, resources as an entrepreneur, and our member programs try to uh, create those platforms for connection. On the research and advocacy side is what 
which is what I'll be talking mostly about today, uh, we look at the underlying economic benefits that local and in independent businesses have in the province. Um, so in 2013, we launched our the first multiple multiplier study in BC and Canada called the Power of Purchasing Report, and I'll talk more about the results of this in the coming slides. Um, just last December, we launched a report on the impact of e-commerce on local and independent retail in BC and Canada. Um, we're working on a measurement framework um, to measure economic impacts and opportunities with businesses and industry segments called our Local Impact Assessment Framework. And we coordinate the BC Buy Local campaign, which I'll also be talking about more today as well. So the first question we often get asked is, why local? Why is it important? And um, really, it's because despite the fact that local businesses are recognized as a powerful and positive economic force in BC, um, they're also losing market share. Um, Canadian local businesses have less than half the total market share on average, and this has been dropping steadily, pretty steadily, since 2008. And in BC, uh, local retailers have the third lowest market share in the country. At the, and the decline in market share matters because locally owned businesses have positive ripple effects on our community and in our economy. And they're a powerful economic engine. And they generate value by circulating dollars many times with other businesses to create jobs and build wealth. We call this the recirculation effect. So we know that local businesses, this is based on our, our study, that local businesses recirculate two and a half times more revenue locally. And we also know that small shifts in purchasing towards local can have a disproportionately large impact on jobs and wages in the province. So by shifting just 1% of purchases to BC-owned businesses, we can generate up to 3,100 jobs and 94 million in wages in the economy. And that's just shifting purchasing. That's not any net new purchasing. So to give an example that puts it into perspective, for the average BC household, um, the average BC household spends just below $59,000 annually on goods and services, so 1% shift in spending to local works out to about $49 a month per BC household. So looking at the results of our 2013 study more closely, um, we can see how those recirculation effects occur and where those impacts come from. So we based the study on a highly commoditized B2B product, which is office supplies. We looked at the local independent office supplier in, uh, based out of East Vancouver called Mills Office Productivity. Uh, and we compared them to a Canadian supplier at the time, which was Grand & Toy. I think they got bought out by Office Max since that study. Um, the multinational, which was Staples, and a pure online retailer, which was Office Max. So um, to create our we used a well-established economic methodology that's been used in similar studies across the United States and the UK. So what we saw was that based on a $1 million contract, the local supplier contributed 100% more into the local community than the multinational, which uh, was Staples. And this direct local recirculation takes the form of jobs, taxes, and procurement or purchasing with other local businesses. And then those businesses, this is where the recirculation come, effect comes in, also provide local jobs and pay taxes and buy from other local businesses as well. We also looked at um, local purchasing as a percentage of total purchasing in the study. And what we saw that was that although they all supplied office supplies, which are generally commoditized and come from some few key sources, you know, like post-it notes come from GM, that kind of thing. Mills local purchasing was more than double its multinational competitors, and that's largely due to the fact that um, its head office is local. As I mentioned, it's in Vancouver in British Columbia. So at head offices, they don't just purchase the inventory supplies, but they also purchase non-inventory purchases. So this is services, cleaning supplies, branding and marketing, accounting, those kinds of things. And local businesses are more likely to purchase those things with other local businesses. Another significant outcome from the study is related to employment. Um, the recirculation effect of local businesses generates not just more dollars in the economy, but also more diverse employment opportunities and opportunities for wealth creation and distribution. So as I mentioned, uh, head offices 
have broader purchasing mandate than other offices. Um, they'll also have a broader range of jobs, and in particular, management and executive level jobs. So this is where some of the job um, diversity comes from, but also the wealth distribution through higher paying level jobs. So what we can see here is a diversity employment of employment and opportunity, and also in terms of breadth, but also in terms of the quality of the available employment opportunities that are available that are around as well. And then, as I mentioned, local businesses also hire local service suppliers, like accountants and lawyers and marketing firms. Um, and so that also helps to contribute to that broader diversity of jobs and um, the circulation of those businesses as well. Oops, sorry, jumped ahead there. Um, and there's lots of social benefits to supporting local businesses as well. So there's one of the things we found was that local businesses give up to five times more to charities in their community. Um, so Mills is a great example of this in particular. They're a certified B Corp, which is um, sort of a good business circulation, sustainable business cer certification program. They have a green fleet. They have a really strong volunteer program with the um, Vancouver Food Bank. <clears throat> and they also do social hiring, so they, in their warehouse, they've hired those with barriers to employment. Um, and they actually, Mills is a great case in particular, they actually found that they sort of hit a ceiling with the number of people they were able to hire, and those, those um, hires were actually staying a long time. So they helped to create a social enterprise in the downtown east side that provided a training program for people with um, barriers to employment. It's called Half Cafe. So this is an example of some of the ripple effects that local businesses generate. Uh, it's real value in terms of jobs and wages, but there's also additional impacts um, such as local investment. Local businesses often bank with uh, local credit unions, for example, who, who tend to give back more into our local communities. Um, as I said, they pay taxes, which contributes to infrastructure and things like parks and community centers in the community. Um, and then there can even be positive environmental impacts with more local supply chains. You can reduce um, the effects of those global supply chains, carbon impacts, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so if there's so many businesses are buying local, then, you know, why, if there's so many benefits to buying local, what are the challenges? And what we found is that um, one of the key challenges is defining local, and I'll, I'll talk about how we define it in a moment. Um, people are sometimes challenged to identify local businesses. Another is measuring the impact, like what impact does local purchasing really have? And so we're working on that as well. And finally, um, understanding availability and supplier capacity. So at the procurement, institutional procurement level, you know, we often see that um, procurement people and RFPs, they're worried that local businesses don't have the ability to scale up or provide products or services at the scale that the institutions might need. Um, so we try to work with them on different strategies to help local businesses compete in that, at that level. Um, and then it's also just understanding what is a local product and making it really easy for people to understand the availability of those products and services. So as part of our advocacy work, um, we took the first question, what is local, and did about a year's worth of research to come up with a definition that looked at the economic impact of a, of a local business versus a more mileage-based definition. <clears throat> so if you look at it from a Miles' point of view, for most of Canada, um, a local definition that would be based on mileage, it might make sense from a carbon perspective if you're looking at um, carbon miles, for example, but not necessarily from an economic one, since most Canadian cities are kind of located on the border, a 200-kilometer radius or a 300-kilometer radius uh, is, can often make the difference between buying between BC and the U.S., for example, sort of a moot point. So we actually wanted to look at where the value and impact lies, and based on our study, we chose to look at ownership and production. So for a local owned business, 51% um, is the baseline across the board, and then 
any additional value just increases from there when you get further above 51%. So a local owned business is 51% ownership, private ownership in British Columbia and also their headquarters in BC. For a local grown product, it's a minimum of 51% of agricultural inputs are from British Columbia. And for a local made product, 51% um, of the processing or manufacturing occurs in British Columbia. And then these, these definitions can be sort of built on each other. So a product can be locally made, locally grown, and from a local owned business, and you would have the most value there. But you're really creating economic value with, if any one of these definitions are present. And we designed this um, definition as well, I should mention, to be scalable. So LOCO looks at BC-wide is our definition of local, but we wanted to create a definition that regions or communities could scale to their areas as well. Um, this is just a quick slide to talk about the impact framework that we're developing um, in terms of ways to measure the impact that individual businesses or um, industries or sub-industry groups could have. So we see this impact framework as, as almost like an economic footprint that can be looked at to measure uh, businesses' practices and how they're impacting the community. And so we look at um, geography, so where this kind of tells us where taxes flow, where employment is generated, and also where reinvestment is happening. We look at ownership and ownership models because uh, that tells us where the profits are felt and how wealth is distributed. So own di different local ownership models, including cooperatives or employee share ownership plans, profit sharing plans, those tell us a little bit about how wealth is distributed in, in the province along with the diversity of employment through geography. And then with business practices, we're focused on those practices that are related to purchasing. Um, and the economic recirculation impacts. And we have some tools that we can refer people to to also look at uh, the environmental and social and giving practices and how they're involved in their businesses as well. So the idea is really to have people consider what they're doing as a business, how they're contributing to their community, and also to find a way to celebrate those businesses who are doing it really well. Um, this slide looks at MODO, so we piloted our assessment, we're moving into the second pilot of assessment this month, but from our first pilot, um, we worked, MODO was probably one of our larger participants, and what we found was even though they have a product that is not local, uh, MODO is a car sharing cooperative program, so obviously the cars are not made in British Columbia, but through their, how they've set up their business practices, they're able to have a lot of economic impact. Um, they use mostly local suppliers for their vehicle servicing, uh, for their marketing and the merchandising, um, a lot of their inventory and consumables. And they've actually upped their numbers since doing this, um, since doing this assessment. They decided it was a core value for them and they really look at ways that they can localize their purchasing. And what's interesting too is their able to increase some of those business impacts as well by working with uh, social enterprises. So one example is they work with Kingers Car Wash that provides opportunities for youth in crisis. Um, so that also helps to create value in the community. So that's a little bit of the background of the research that feeds into our Buy Local campaign. And now that I've covered off that Why Local message, I'm going to switch gears a bit to talk about buy local campaigns and the campaign framework, um, but I thought this might be a good time to see if there are any questions from the audience. Take a break from talking. <laughs> well, thanks for all that uh, great baseline so far, Katja. Um, we did have one question come in from Kriskin uh, right at the start of the presentation asking how you define local, but I think you did a pretty good job of summing all that up in, uh, in the previous slide there. So if anyone else does have any questions, feel free to uh, type them into that question and answer pane, or feel free to raise a hand and, uh, and we can go that route. We'll maybe just give it another 30 seconds or so, let Katja have a, another sip of water. And <laughs> <laughs>
not seeing anything come in, um, but uh, if you do think of something, feel free to type that in and we can get to it as soon as there is a, uh, a natural break in Ketch's presentation. Yeah, not seeing anything, so carry on, Ketch. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so now I'm going to switch gears a bit and talk about uh, bi-local campaigns, how, whether and how they work, and a little bit about the campaign that we've developed. Um, <coughs> so do low, by local campaigns work? Um, studies show that if active and consistent campaigns do work. Um, so through an organization in the United States called the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, or ILSR, we coordinate a study of the success of by local campaigns in BC. And ILSR actually measures them across North America and we're the, we're the BC partners and we coordinate getting results from BC-based businesses. Um, so these studies show they've been doing them for several years now. Um, we've been doing them for the last three years and the last two in particular have had um, really statistically relevant results. Um, and the studies show that these campaigns do impact sales as well as customer awareness and loyalty. They can increase sales um, by three and a half percent or more in communities where there's, as I said, active and consistent campaigns. Uh, in 2014, what we found in the BC study was that a third of businesses reported a positive impact as a result of campaigns in their community. So this isn't just our campaign, but this is active by local campaigns that are maybe running in any community. Um, and over 65% of the businesses reported an increased public awareness and the benefits of buying local as well. And this is um, cons other studies consistently show that consumers love local as well. So last year we did a consumer study as part of our research into the impact of e-commerce on independent retail. Um, on the consumer side of that study we saw that almost 70% of consumers cited Canadian ownership as an important value and 50% of those consumers actively seek local products and even prefer more local products, um, like products from their province or their city. So if we look at trends like the craft beer movement and the maker trends, those are all part of that overall consumer trend to local, local products as well. Um, and this supports, again, is supported by a study from 2013 from the Business Development Bank of Canada that shows that 45% of Canadians make an effort to buy Canadian products. So what we know, you know, overall marketing and sales intelligence tells us that definitely price and convenience are pretty consistently the top two factors for most purchasers. But once you get into that second level of factors of when you might be making choices between um, products that are similar on the price and convenience side, local is a uh, uh, has a high value and influence in that level of decision making. So as an organization, um, Loco BC really want to create a campaign that was designed to help communities and partners respond to these economic development and consumer trends. Um, we wanted to create a campaign that could support existing campaigns or be used as a turnkey solution for communities that didn't have one going or um, didn't have the resources to create something. So the campaign is a framework um, with three key objectives. The first is to illuminate the market for consumers, so let them know where those local businesses and products are. The second is to engage businesses in identifying and talking about their local impact. So um, one of the things we found with local businesses is sometimes they don't know how or what context to talk about the ways in which they're local. So if they're a local business but they don't have a lot of products, for example, um, they might not feel comfortable talking about it. Or if they sell local products but not exclusively local products, they don't always know how to bring that value to the forefront for consumers. So we have some tools and collateral that helps them talk about the ways they engage with their community as a local business, with other local businesses, and what products in their store might be local, and that kind of thing. And finally, we maintain an ongoing campaign platform um, that, is, as I mentioned, can be used as a turnkey approach or can be integrated with existing campaigns to create a consistent message throughout the province. And our role is really to support that framework 
but the reach is driven through partnerships um, such as with the Township of Langley, who will be speaking later. It's really about linking local efforts. Um, so for business networks and communities, we want to help build a bi-local movement and help them commit to a larger message that has some consistency across the province. And um, with the second year of this campaign with the pink dot, what we have found that on anecdotally, people are recognizing the dot more as they move through communities in the province. Um, so we've heard that from some of our partners. Uh, also, networks can engage locally owned businesses in a campaign that's focused on celebrating local businesses and their success and capitalizing on that consumer trend. At the business level, it's, as I said, helping them communicate those local characteristics, capitalize on that consumer trend, and offer a way for local supporting corporations to highlight their local contributions as well. So when we work with many communities and business networks, they have non-local businesses in their networks that they have to serve as well. And what we want to do is encourage those businesses to also buy from local businesses or sell local products. So our tools are designed that those, you know, whether it be a Safeway or some other kind of non-local business can highlight the ways it contributes to the community. It's also a way of encouraging them to do so. The campaign framework is centered on the concept of this pink dot, which is very easily um, to spot and easily visible, and the hashtag BC by local, which we use in social media. So this is an example of how the design can be customized for communities. Um, it can be co-branded, as you can see with the Township of Langley, um, and it links into the overall like general BC by local messaging. We also have other collateral um, including posters, stickers, um, other ways to present the underlying stats and facts with the why local message for consumers. The digital uh, framework of the campaign is quite important. You can see the campaign site at the microsite is at bcbylocal.com. Um, and the way it works is that the microsite draws off the Instagram photos with the hashtag bcbylocal. And then we use um, social media posts from the website and other posts to provide content and storing storytelling opportunities to the campaign. So we can repost. Uh, we have a consumer newsletter list that we're building. And we encourage businesses and business communities to do that as well. So that helps amplify the message across all participants. This year is our second year of the campaign with this branding. Uh, the campaign actually runs uh, December until the end of November each year, but uh, just started with May since this is our upcoming campaign. This year we have three formal activations planned. Um, in May, I'll talk about it in a moment, but we're launching our Eat Local campaign, uh, which is a food and grocery oriented marketing campaign push trying to highlight consumer products, local products in grocery stores. It's basically um, engaging consumers where they're at. In the summer, we'll be celebrating businesses that are using the campaign well. Um, it will be tied into the BC Day long weekend with storytelling and content to celebrate local businesses. And then uh, this year in December, we'll have our fifth annual BC by Local Week in the province and the third with this branding. <clears throat> so this year, our primary campaign metrics are about raising awareness of the DOT with consumers and what it means. Um, so we're measuring this through primarily through impressions and social media. And we also want to look at how we're engaging businesses in the campaign. So we measure this through distribution of the materials and the use of the hashtags. So this is just some of an example of the results that we had after Buy Local Week in December. Um, and our, we were pretty successful in, in getting those impressions with consumers and building our consumer list. This is an example of the upcoming campaign for um, spring, which is launching just before the May long weekend. So uh, essentially, this, our overarching goal with this campaign around Eat Local is to take the local awareness and understanding that consumers have about food and 
you know, really hone in on that and then throughout the campaign and the rest of the year to take that understanding and expand it to other categories as well. But for this campaign in particular, um, we'll be focusing, uh, focusing on food and grocery and building those impressions of the dot. We're engaging communities and grocery and food retailers to participate on the ground to have the dot be visible in stores um, and on products. And some of the plan activities that we have planned for May include a consumer contest, or we're calling it the Eat Local Challenge, challenging them to kick off the summer with the Eat Local meal or barbecue. Um, we have retail collateral packages for retailers and for food producers. We'll be doing digital advertising <clears throat> to help build that awareness through social media. And we have some storytelling opportunities with our local impact assessment and, and creating custom digital platform for communities if they're interested. So if you're interested in hearing more about the May version campaign or getting involved, um, I think Josh will my contact information will be part of the follow-on materials from the webinar and, and just contact me and I can send you more information about that. Um, finally, the campaign really doesn't work without our partners, both to fund it, the campaign's entirely self-funded and, and all the money we raise goes into supporting the campaign itself, but more importantly to activate the campaign in the communities with businesses. Um, so now I wanted to turn it over to our host from the Township of Langley. Um, they joined the campaign in December of this year and really ran with it. They've been a great partner, so they'll talk about how they see local unfolding in their community. Um, Angie Quali is a counselor at the Township of Langley and she's very active in the business community as the owner of the well-seasoned gourmet food store. And Val Gathka is a senior manager of corporate administration at the Township of Langley. Um, She's been a great partner in taking this campaign framework and customizing it for the communities in Langley. And maybe just before we uh, we hand things over, to, sorry just to, to cut you off there, Val, for a second, but we, we've just had a couple of questions come in that I think might be uh, relevant before uh, we move on to the next part of the presentation. Uh, so just a, a couple of questions here from uh, Colleen who asks, um, wh what do you see as the difference between buy local and think local? And I think that might be just sort of a, a different branding exercise, but maybe, um, Katya, you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I, it is partly um, it is partly branding. We are part of the think. There is a movement in the in the U.S. and and Canada around using the language "think local first," and that's definitely part of our message. Um, but when we came up with planning this campaign, which we did in partnership with um, several communities, business improvement associations, uh, and businesses. We realized that our message was really around purchasing. Um, for this campaign in particular, we're really focused on how can we ship those dollars over. And so we just ended up going with the buy local, BC buy local simple message. We know exactly what our call to action is for people. But definitely, it, it, in our minds, it does include that think local first um, message. And it's really just, and we'll, and we want to support that as well. It's really like, first you have to make those local options available, and and um, make people aware of them, and then they can, instead of hunting it down, at the, you know, themselves. We just want to make it really easy to take that next step to find local. Awesome, thanks, Katja. And then just the uh, the second follow up question from Colleen there is uh, she's asking, are you involved with the BC Chamber of Commerce as a partner? At the moment, we're not involved with the BC Chamber of Commerce. Um, we it's a pretty grassroots campaign. We've sort of added partners every time as every time we run an activation, we add new partners. Um, it's been it's been. I think a relatively slow build, partially based on the capacities of our organization and our ability to reach out to people, but definitely those are the kinds of groups that uh, we would love to partner with. Great. Well, with, uh, with just a couple of questions there, just to break things up, uh, I think we'll hand things over to uh, Val and Angie. Take it away. Thank you very much. So just want to uh, formally say thank you on behalf of the Township of Langley uh, for providing us with the opportunity 
to participate today. We're definitely a, a champion of uh, buy local. Um, Um, and just want to say, you know, that invariably uh, what we're here to do today is to share with you our buy local story. So, you know, um, we're no different than any other municipality in British Columbia. A large part of our community <coughs> is comprised of uh, small business. And uh, in 2014, Van City did a um, report, if you will, open for business that actually qualified that by saying 98% of uh, business in British Columbia is small business. So with that, the township and our economic development uh, vision and uh, what local BC is doing, they very much jive together and it was a natural connection uh, for us to work and help uh, grow and uh, expand our local economy and, and help the businesses in our community. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, the Township of Langley, just a few little demographics of uh, a little bit about where we, uh, who we are and where we are. So in Verbally, uh, located in the Lower Mainland, kind of central uh, between Vancouver and Chilliwack, we call ourselves the hub of the Fraser Valley. Um, so we're 116,000 people as of uh, the end of 2015, uh, projected to double within the next 15 years. Uh, so some pretty steady growth there um, in a very short order. And maybe something unique about the township, a, a couple of things actually, one being that 75% uh, of our land use is within the ALR. So, um, you know, helping to expand and grow the food sector uh, is definitely something in our foresight. And one of the edges of the township actually borders or connects with the United States. So uh, we have perhaps maybe some unique economic challenges, uh, especially when the dollar is favorable for Canadians to be shopping in the States. Um, and one of those reasons why we also looked to uh, see how we can make a change to have people really consider shopping local first. Um, in 2015, just some housing stats, lots of housing starts um, in 2015. We have over 6,000 active business licenses in the township um, and relatively inexpensive to get a, to obtain a business license here. Um, our business taxation is like many other municipalities, uh, some of the larger uh, or cities in the province you know, can be around the um, three to five to seven percent of residential. Um, tax, but um, ours is closer to the three end. Um, and sectors of all types in the municipality between uh, agriculture, uh, construction, healthcare, manufacturing, uh, we do have a aviation rotary wing niche, if you will, hospitality, retail, transportation, um, and we have a fairly vibrant film production community as well. Um, so um, that's just a little bit about us and um, who we are. So uh, why we got involved, Councillor Qualley is going to share a little bit about how we got involved and why we did this. Thanks, Val. Um, why we got involved, because it's important. Um, it's important to a uh, thriving community that we support our, the business community um, here in the Township of Langley. Um, we have a pretty progressive value or pretty progressive um, business climate here in the township. Um, there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurial spirit here in the Langleys, and uh, I think as a as a municipal government, it's our job to sort of um, help uh, build on that spirit and, and sort of facilitate the growth in um, our independent businesses here. Um, you know, Katya was talking a little bit about a, a shift in spending and how. A simple 1% shift increases, I think she said, around $46 per household. Um, it's really easy to see here um, in a small community, a relatively small community with less than 120,000 residents, how that kind of shift um, can really make a difference to our community. Um, it also adds um, a lot of benefit to the community because Langley isn't just um, all independent locally owned businesses. Uh, we have a lot of other uh, types of business here in the community, but they all seem to kind of work together um, and, and the local businesses that 
are maybe not as locally based as some um, certainly participate in the, the whole process of the local economy through employment and all kinds of other pieces. Um, it, it, I, I as, a, as a business owner, I own a specialty food store and a cooking school here in Langley, and as a business owner, I've been supporting uh, independent um, food processors and manufacturers for a really long time. So it was uh, a natural connection to me uh, to local BC, to BC by local, uh, because I've been waving that flag as a business person for a really long time. Um, as I said, I sort of think it's local government's responsibility on a certain level um, to um, help champion um, a strong economy and, and growth in our business community and to leverage partnerships that we have in the municipality to encourage um, buying local and supporting our local businesses. Katya also said uh, about um, the percentage of businesses, um, she said that um, local businesses give up to five times uh, the amount of of donations to local charities as uh, non-locally based businesses. And in a, in a community like Langley, we have a fantastic um, volunteer community here that works really hard to make Langley as great a community as it is. And so the, the volunteer base and our, and our um, service organizations, our service clubs really rely heavily on our independent business to support their uh, work as nonprofits. And so the connection is just reiterated again and again that you know when you're shopping local, it affords the local businesses the opportunity to support the local nonprofits. and it's just sort of it you know raises the whole community up. So um, one of the things that I've had a really good fortune of, of participating in um, this program with the township and Fortunately, we have um, municipal employees who are very forward-thinking and open and receptive to new ideas. And so when I came to Val and introduced Val to this program, um, she was, yes, absolutely, how do we get involved and where do we participate? So I feel fortunate as um, a leader in the community that we have a municipal government that's interested in um, in uh, moving this agenda forward. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity to share success, I think, in the, in the township if we're looking at that. Um, the uh, campaign that the township participated in last uh, winter was the local um, BC by local campaign. And um, the township had all of these proprietary uh, buttons and stickers and posters made. And, it was really fantastic as a participant in the program to see my staff engaging with our customers, with our community members about this. But as, a, as somebody who is a representative of local government, it was so incredible to walk into the businesses in our community and see the people that were participating in this program. Um, our community, our, our township, because Val's through, through her department through economic development, they communicate with a lot of the lo all of the local businesses on business uh, licensing renewals and all of that. This is a really great opportunity, I think, for the township to interface with the local businesses on a totally different level than they ever get to participate. This isn't just about perhaps licensing and regulations and collecting municipal taxes. This is about um, working on something together and sort of. Uh, shifting the awareness uh, to local and the importance of that. So um, I really think it gave the opportunity to the township to let the local business community know that they are important to them and they do make a difference in the community. And so uh, through this program, a lot of our local businesses, that, or all of the local businesses that participated, um, were able to sort of network with, with each other and, and talk about the other businesses participating and sort of give a little bit more back to the community. So I'm absolutely certain that the success from the program that Val and her team ran last year will continue to grow and, and be even more successful. In fact, Val has planned an initiative for the Eat Local Month, and I'll let Val tell you what she's got planned for that. So I think one of the first things uh, that we thought of, you know, when um, Councillor Qualley approached us last year was, oh my goodness, do we have the time and the effort to be doing this? How much is going to you know, do we need to invest to, to get involved? And it was actually quite easy. And I think that's one of the things that I'd like to, 
you know, highlight is the fact that local was so um, helpful in kind of bringing to us whatever we needed. Having all of the information that they do and the materials available online really made it easy for us to either distribute that information or for us to point businesses and business organizations in our community to, which includes the chamber, kind of going back to uh, someone's question earlier, we do work with our business organizations on that level. So, you know, we got out of the gate really quick last year, and it was just simply for the buy local week at the end of the year. So we probably had about, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks heads heads up and we were out of the gate. We uh, developed a website and a sign up portal. We did a whole bunch of social media. We got these buttons made locally for really um, very inexpensively and we really did have an ocean of pink out in the uh, community. We wrote some media articles and released those to the local media which they uh, grabbed onto and Loco also web tagged all of the participants on their website. So people, whether they were in the township or you know the broader region, were able to see which businesses were participating in and how they could actually uh, get out and use some of their consumables. With the uh, social media, we were able to kind of track hits, um, views, etc., and that was um, extremely valuable as well. We got a lot of positive comments through social media, like, you know, I love living in Langley and uh, supporting the many local um, businesses. There's no kind of, there's no need to go outside of the community which are all things that we really wanted to uh, hear. So we're wrapping up for 2016. Um, we have, you know, put some information out in our um, Insight newsletter, which is our economic development newsletter that goes up quarterly, um, and, you know, sharing with uh, businesses how they can participate and with the non-business reader, you know, how they can also get involved. We've been out to our business organizations um, making campaign presentations and we're hosting a challenge with them this year asking them to generate as many possible new sign-ups for this program. So effectively just handing over the campaign to some extent um, to the business organizations and helping them leverage um, local within our own community as a whole. Um, we developed some information business cards. So they look like your standard business card, but on the back they're intended for the business community and it simply provides them with all the information they need to know about how they can get involved this year. So if we're out at events and we don't have a chance to speak with people, we provide them with this card and they've got all the information that they need to know on um, how they can participate um, in our activities this year. Uh, with Eat Local, which is the first um, activation, as Katya mentioned, in May, um, we're going to be providing some free billfold uh, promotional information that restaurants can put in with a bill um, to help people understand how their buying power affects the local economy. And we're definitely out at a community events and markets to um, connect with people because uh, buy local is, you know, obviously very, um, you know, it's something that really resides and resonates for a lot of people now and we want to make sure that we connect with the community and raise their awareness. And as Councillor Qualley mentioned, uh, we're actually doing an Eat Local event here on a council night. So on May 9th from 2 till 5 p.m., uh, we will be holding an Eat Local event at our uh, civic facility. Uh, that happens to be intentionally a day that council meets. So there'll be two council meetings that day. Um, and the Eat Local feature, which will have about 20 displays uh, of uh, different food sector um, businesses in the community will actually have stalls or booths, if you will, um, in the civic facility so that people coming out to um, the council event can, um, you know, invariably participate in the Eat Local feature and vice versa. So we, um, we had a little bit of a slow start, but we've uh, ramped up and we've got 20 full booths for the uh, May 9th event. So that is just kind of one of the things that we'll be working out of the gate um, starting in May and then working on till uh, August and through to the uh, last activation in the fall. So those are some of the things that the township has done to try and leverage um, something that is starting to become, a, if you will, an, an ocean of pink across BC. And we're very proud to be working with local and um, if there's anything that the township can do to help other municipalities with their activities, we're here to help. Thanks very much. 
Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for uh, for sharing your experiences with with buying loco and and with this campaign. And uh, certainly very kind of you to extend that all the branch to other communities as well to uh, talk to you for uh, to some of your successes and and learning opportunities as well. Uh, during the presentation, we've had a lot of questions come in, and so I'm going to start at the uh, the top of the queue here, and we can work our way down. So uh, first question up, Phil, Felicity asks, uh, what would be the difference between buy local and the 10% shift campaign? We've been promoting 10% shift in our community. Is there a move to buy local as the recognizable brand? Um, well, I can answer that. Um, the 10% shift campaign, as I'm not sure where they're at with that campaign. One of the things that um, we found was sometimes wrapping people's head around the 10% message was hard, so we moved that down to 1%, partly because the impacts at 1% are also <clears throat> quite impressive. Um, and, and sometimes when you talk about 1%, it's just an easier number for people to wrap their heads around. Um, I don't, as I said, our campaign isn't really desired, designed to compete. We really more want to support other campaigns, so with um, the hashtag model and the co-branding available, we're easily able to to co co-market with other campaigns. So I don't think there's any one um, go-to campaign. They have slightly different messaging, but at the core, we're all going for the same. We have the same goal. Awesome. Thanks, Katja. Next question here. Um, Pat asks, if we have a buy local and or an eat local campaign in our community, how do you recommend they be integrated? Well, one way I think is through the co-branding. You know, there's there's different levels we have. Just at the free level, if you're using the hashtag with BC Buy Local, we monitor that. So we're able to see that. And as Val said, then we can amplify those efforts through our platform. Um, through some of the paid resources, we can provide you some uh, additional collateral to use, and, and maybe um, maybe Val and Angie can talk about, you know, how they see how they see those kinds of things working. Um, for me, I think because I'm in the food business, it's a really easy conversation for me to have about how to highlight buy local and eat local. I don't think they um, should ever be far from the same sentence. Um, so I think in, in the township particularly, as Val mentioned, 75% of the Langley Township is inside the ALR. We're a huge food and beverage producing region. So we have a lot of um, product that our local restaurants can um, access. And particularly with the change in growing season, may more product is, has become available. So I think with the billfold, uh, that Val and her team have created. There's really a great opportunity for people who who sell food and process food in our community to have the conversation about not just local but almost even hyper local, like what is coming out of Langley and then what's coming out of the province. So um, I, I I see just so many opportunities, and I think you know Val and the team here at the township have recognized that, and and we'll be working with the local restaurants to to have that that's, you know, super significant connection. For sure. I mean, I think just one of the other things that kind of comes top of mind, we actually just engaged, uh, uh, if you will, like a foodie who is going to be helping us write the food storytelling uh, here in the township. And uh, one of the things that we're going to do invariably is we're going to be leveraging, obviously, this for, you know, all of our local initiatives. But we're also going to be doing that in sound bites with video clips for our website. So it just helps to paint the picture of an economy that people not only want to invest in, but actually want to live in. So to have that vibrant community where people want to have, bring their families, you know, find their jobs, locate um, as a business and invest in their future. Great. Uh, thanks for that all. Uh, got a question here from Meredith asking about the costs of rolling out the campaign. And uh, Meredith, just for uh, for the sake of today's webinar, we're trying to keep things uh, very informational uh, at just sort of a, a base level of, of what is possible. But I encourage you to get in touch with uh, with either Katja or, or um, Val and Angie if, if you'd like to talk about any uh, specific costing. 
Um, other question here we have is from Beth. Uh, how do you implement a buy local strategy within purchasing policy? Is there a good policy out there? That's a really great question. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any one policy part of the work that uh, LOCO is trying to do on the more institutional and government procurement side is to collect best practices um, and really there's a lot of really great stories of how different um, municipalities and institutions have been able to integrate local purchasing <clears throat> into their procurement um, in, in, in inventive ways by focusing a lot more uh, less on local as a you know requirement, partly because trade agreements uh, make that difficult, but focusing more on how can we shift procurement um, modeling to be more focused on value, for example, um, versus and total value of purchases versus just um, like cost and things like that. And so uh, we work with several partners who have experience with that. Um, we have connections with different procurement officers and different types of institutions and organizations that we can sort of reach out to with examples. And we're continually trying to build those um, lessons and best practices. The other um, thing that we are trying to do with the local impact assessment is use that as a tool to identify uh, local businesses and also to identify gaps. So um, as the assessment builds out, you know, we're talking to businesses, we're using that as a leverage point to talk to businesses about who their suppliers are and we also want to be able to use that as a tool to, to um, perhaps refer local suppliers to where an individual business or organization might have gaps but also then to look at that data that we're able to gather overall and see, well, are there gaps, larger, you know, more systemic gaps that need to be filled, like maybe we need to do capacity development in certain areas and that kind of thing. So that's some of our broader work in the background that we're looking at. Awesome. Thanks, Ketch. Uh Question here from uh, Manuel, who asks, do you create commercials for TV or radio that are available for communities to run via local TV or radio? Uh, right now, we don't do that for the campaign. It's mostly a capacity resource capacity issue. Uh, we do do media outreach, and um, we cross our fingers <laughs> every time that they will... Um, <clears throat> you know, come back to us and do, do some stories. So whenever we do do that kind of media outreach, we really like to focus on uh, highlighting businesses. So for example, with our press launch event for the BC by Local campaign last December, even for the last two years, we've, hold, we've held like the actual event in a local business. We invite local business uh, owners from the com community to be there and we refer the press to them once, you know, essentially we just want to get our why local stats out and then we want to talk to the actual business owners that's that's where the stories are great and uh, another follow-up question from Manuel here um, he asks is there a difference between BC by local and by local BC uh, the by local BC campaign is um, it's not actually a campaign, it's a program through the Ministry of Agriculture that um, provides funding to, um, uh, my understanding is agricultural food producers to market themselves as local and their goal is around, um, expand, their goal is similarly around expanding the market and sales for those businesses. Uh, it's a separate funding, we, we talk to the ministry about it. Uh, our campaign is broader. In May, we happen to be focused on Eat Local, but overall, we are focused on all kinds of locally owned businesses. Um, so they are separate programs, although we are in touch with them. Yeah, that's uh, that's right, Ketchit. Thanks for summarizing the uh, government <laughs> side of things there for me. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, 
And this is the last question we have here in the queue, so if there are any other questions, feel free to uh, send them in. We do still have about uh, half an hour in today's webinar, so plenty of time. Uh, but the last question here, uh, Meredith asks, uh, you alluded to different kinds of local businesses, small local independent businesses and larger businesses located in the community. Did the campaign involve both and how? And I'm assuming this is directed more to uh, Val and Angie, it did come up during your presentation. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, really, it. Uh, I think we, you know, last year when um, in 2015, kind of looking at our initial activities, there was a broad reach. Um, and so, yes, invariably, we did reach some small businesses that had, you know, a handful of employees. But we also reached out to organizations that, you know, around uh, you know, about 50 employees, et cetera, um, to make sure that we involve them as well. And then beyond that as well, because the the large businesses in our community as well are key anchors, and they're the ones that actually reach out and use the services of small business um, and some of the things that they have to offer. So it was, uh, you know, broad in reach. Um, and, yeah, so we kind of we target them all, um, not only on our own, but through the business organizations themselves. It was really good to see the uptake. Um, as Val said uh, previously, there was a really short window in which the township, between the time the township sort of had uh, approval to activate the campaign and the start of the of the campaign window, uh, and Val and her team worked really hard to engage with the uh, with the business community. And, and um, so I was really impressed to see sort of the uptake, but I could see as the campaign um, ran on, as, as the campaign evolved, more and more businesses were starting to pick up the torch. And so that was really great to see um, where, you know, day one of the campaign, you might have only seen a couple of people in the business wearing one of these buttons. By day seven in the campaign, all the staff was engaged, and I was running into people you know, in the supermarket who were wearing these buttons, who I was giving them to customers who bought local product in my store, and they were wearing them around the community. So it was really great to see um, the momentum the campaign uh, took on during, during the, the length of the campaign. So uh, I would suggest that, you know, although it might start a little bit small, um, starting small is better than not starting at all. So. Uh, it, uh, it seemed to pick up some, some momentum pretty quickly. Great, thank you. Um, one other question that's come in here, and this one's for me, I think, uh, which doesn't happen too, too often, but uh, uh, John asks, is there a working group within the economic division that could assist developing a local program that would provide meals to regional hospitals, grown, raised, processed, and delivered locally? Uh, John, this is something I know just a little bit about uh, because I believe it is a question that um, I've been asked in the past. And from what I understand, um, and I should preface that there isn't anything specifically within our division that, that would work or, or look at this sort of thing. I think it would largely fall to uh, either the Ministry of Health, which is typically responsible for uh, procuring that sort of thing through the hospitals, or maybe even um, community sport and cultural development. But as I understand, one of the, um, the barriers to um, implementing that sort of thing has to do with trade regulation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I will follow up with you, though, uh, John, offline and, and make sure that I can get a, a concrete answer as to why this is or, or is not happening. But it uh, it certainly seems to me like a good idea. And, and Katya, you might have uh, something to contribute there? Uh, yeah, there actually, um, I believe that there is a pilot program. I that is looking at how to get more local food into hospitals on the island. And I don't know off the top of my head who, you know, who is actually is driving that initiative forward. Um, but I can follow up with you, Josh, on a couple of links to the people that have run that. Yeah. I believe it's still in pilot phase. That would be great, yeah, because then I can pass that information uh, on to John. So, so thank you for that. Another question here uh, from Bobby, who asks, will the BC by local uh, expand to the Okanagan? Uh, we're hoping to, yes. We're, we're talking to some different partners in the Okanagan. Um, so far, we haven't um, 
finalized uh, any partners there, but Nature's Fair Market, which is based out of uh, Kelowna, just joined on as a local member and will be participating in the social media side of the campaign a little bit. Um, and we've talked to um, different, um, the Chamber in Kelowna and some different business associations. So um, it's mostly a question of resource, uh, resource availability on their end. I think there's a lot of interest in the campaign in the Okanagan. And we're just um, trying to figure out the right funding model to support it there. Great. Well, um, I haven't seen any other questions come in. So uh, in the last 30 seconds here, I think I will just say uh, thank you so much, Katja, um, Val, and uh, Angie, for coming together today and sharing your experiences with uh, certainly not only the importance of, of buying local and the large economic impact that it has, but your, your stories of success as well. It was really inspiring to hear how uh, well a program like Local BC uh, can work within communities to really boost the the purchasing of, of local goods and, and what that can do to the local economy. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining us and sharing today and thanks to all our attendees for hanging in there. We had uh, quite a few of you on the line and you even stuck it out all the way through questions. So thanks very much and uh, unless there's anything else uh, I'll say goodbye and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you Josh. Thanks, thanks Josh. Okay. Thanks, Take care everybody. all. Bye-bye.